here is another one of our stair building videos where I am not going to provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to build this stairway. I have books and other videos on that. However, we are going to be taking a tour of the stairway to provide you with a few things you might consider when building this type of a stairway. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. We have treated lumber and pins connecting the treated lumber to the concrete. And I realize some of you are going to use treated lumber for your stringers. And I say go for it if that's what you need to do. And I understand that in some areas treated lumber might work better. Here's a view of the stringers connecting to a beam. And you can toe nail the stringers into the beam with 16D galvanized, some type of a nail that is going to be corrosion resistant. I would like to say corrosion proof, but I have not came across a material like that yet. I know some people say that stainless steel is awesome. However, I have seen stainless steel or something that is sold as stainless steel fall apart and start to corrode. And here you can see where the beams are sitting on top of the wall and butting into the first joist. And even though I would like to build something like this, if I could, I'm not going to buy an extra long board to build something like this. And you might need a support post located inside of the wall framing and underneath the beam to transfer the structural load from above down into the wall framing. However, for a stairway, that might not be necessary because we're really not going to have a lot of weight up there. And of course, here's a version of the beam flush with the wall, providing you with another way to build something like this, along with our double stringers and our mitered corners here. And the double stringers will provide you with a little more structural support. And the mitered corners will provide you with another way to finish off this part of the stairway and the beam sitting on top of the post. Next up, let's take another look at the stringers. And even though I didn't provide one in the center, you can always double up that one also. And for those of you who have watched some of my other videos, when it comes to the outside stairs. I'm not a big fan of nailing lumber together, especially under certain weather conditions where moisture can seep in between the stringers. And if that moisture remains there long enough, it can start to rot and deteriorate the lumber. And if that is a concern of yours, then you might consider using a 4x12 and the reason why I am not using a 4x12 up against the wall is because we can actually fasten this stringer to the wall studs to provide us with a nice structural tie. However, this might not be the case in the center of the stairway or at the edge where we are not going to have additional support like the wall framing. Next up, let's go ahead and add a spacer in between the stringer and the wall framing. And this is going to be a one by four. And then we are going to build a little guardrail. And the guardrail can finish with stucco or siding. And if you notice, we are going to take a metal post and embed it into a concrete footing. Otherwise, this wall will not be very strong. You might even be able to move it. And we do not want any part of the stairway moving if possible. Now here's the three quarter inch gap I was telling you about that you might need to install some type of stucco or siding or other finishes. And again, this is just something you can do, not something you have to do. However, the post is something that most people don't do. However, they should do. So another view of the wall and the post and you can connect it with some bolts. And next up, let's go ahead and take a look at another way to build a guardrail on the outside here. And we're going to use four by four posts, two by four, two by twos, and we will be bolting the posts to the stair stringers and to the landing beams. Let's go ahead and come around here. And you can see here where we have a post on each side. We have about a one inch gap here. And of course, just another way that you can build this. 
Under the handrail, we have a one by two that we can use to fasten the balusters to, and at the same time, fasten the one by to the top railing. And I've built a lot of handrails like this. It's actually a common architectural detail, along with the angled balusters connecting to the angled one by four. Take a look at the bottom here. And you can position this either higher or lower. However, most building codes suggest that you cannot get a four inch round ball through any part of the stairway, including the guardrail in between the post and the balusters. And of course, this area right here. So you might need to lower this to make it work. Another view there. Let's go ahead and go on to the inside, which basically mirrors the outside. And you can use larger balusters and larger railings. Don't forget, we're using two by fours. You could always use two by six. And again, this space right here cannot be larger than four inches. And if you don't know what your local building codes are, you can always check with your local building department or even local contractors might be able to provide you with that information. And of course, we have our metal pole. And in this example, I took the pole and I shoved it all the way over over to the edge of the post here so that I could nail the bottom angled railing. Otherwise, I would have had a problem there connecting the bottom railing, the bottom board, this one right here to the bottom of the post. Now, another thing you can do will be to countersink your bolts if you don't want them to be sticking out like we have here. And this concludes part one of the video. Part two will provide you with a little more information about how to frame the rest of the building. Along with making the roof a little steeper, we have a 12 and 12 pitch here, and the roof will be sitting on top of the floor framing. And during this series, I've already had a couple of viewers tell me that you can't balloon frame a wall and you can't bolt the floor to the wall framing studs. And I'm not here to convince you that you can or cannot use any of the methods in my videos. My job is to provide you with a few different methods. And your job will be to choose which one you're going to use. And at the same time, don't forget that Building something like this might require structural engineering and local building authorities' approval in your area. And I have positioned the door here so that it will have easier access to the upper floor. If the door was over here, you'd have to walk all the way around or walk through the garage and go around this way. Next up, let's go ahead and install our floor 12 inch on center 2 by 12 with mid-span blocks. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this, get a different view here. And of course, our drywall backing for the ceiling, along with our stair deck connection here, we are going to slide a couple of beams in here. And you could always cut this out of one piece of lumber instead of doing what I did here, notching this board over the beams. But we are going to be dropping the beams here. We usually want the outside deck to be a little bit lower than the floor. However, the way we're going to be building this one here, it's really not going to matter. But I went ahead and dropped this anyway. And you don't need to run the beams all the way to the joist. So something that you could do if you had extra material kind of a thing. And by extra material, I would just suggest doing this if you had an eight foot piece of lumber. And you could cut those two pieces out of that eight foot piece of lumber. I'm not suggesting that you need to use a 10 foot piece of lumber when an eight foot piece of lumber will work. And let's not forget that there are different ways to build this deck. I'm running the beams over to sit on top of a four by four post along with running the rim or the outside board here past both the back and front edge and then using a strap to connect everything together. And of course, this strap can be located on either side here. Now let's go over to the front here, give you a good view. And hopefully I am providing you with enough views of everything along with the footings for the post and the stair stringers. And if you notice, the stairway is coming past the edge of the building. 
and something like this might not be what an architect would like to see. However, if you don't have a choice, because the top of the stairway needs to be located at a specific spot, then you will need to work with what you have. Now, I do have a space in between the stairs and the wall to allow for whatever type of exterior finish like siding or stucco. So this stairway will have a gap between the wall and the stairway. And that could save us a few dollars in waterproofing the stairway when it connects to the building. The view of how the stair stringers connect to the beam here. Next up, let's go ahead and install the stairway decking and the floor sheathing. And we are using 2x12s for our decking here and the stair treads. And the steps will need to be ripped down to 11 inches. This board will be 11 inches wide for our stairway, along with the 2x8 risers that will need to be cut down just a little bit, maybe about an eighth of an inch. Let's go to the other side here. Go to the top again, our gap. And let's not forget that the gap between the top decking and the floor might need to be a little smaller than the gap between the stairs and the wall to prevent a trip hazard. And as always, if that does not make sense, it will if you make that mistake here. Next up, let's go ahead and install our base plates along with our roof rafters, 24 inches on center, along with the notches for our lookouts or outlookers. And the bottom of the rafters will need to be shaped so that we can use a smaller piece of fascia board. And this was another issue from one of our viewers. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And I will be trying to answer those in future videos. And hopefully if the individual watches this video, they will get a better understanding of how you can shape the rafters to allow you to use a 2x8 or a 2x6 for fascia board instead of a 2x12 or 2x10. Next up, let's go ahead and head to the top here where we can see that we will need two boards for our ridge. And I'm using a 2x12 and a 2x6. Otherwise, I would need a 2x16 here. And that might be a difficult piece of wood to find in different parts of the world. And of course, this would be another option you could consider, along with reshaping the top board here so that this part will not be hanging down from the fascia board. Our collar ties, and they are spaced 48 inches on center or every other rafter on two foot on center spacing. And let's not forget that this roof here will be extremely steep and difficult to roof or install the roof sheathing. And that sounds like another video that I will need to make. Next up, let's go ahead and install our roof rafter blocks with the shaped top so that we can get better nailing through the roof sheathing and into the blocks. Next up, let's go ahead and install our gable studs. And our gable studs will be installed 16 inches on center. And this side of the building will be a little different than the other side where we are going to need a door. And of course, the doorway should provide you with the first clue why we needed to position the stairway in this location because it would have been difficult to install a door if we moved it over. Or should I say, a door that you wouldn't need to crawl through. Next up, let's go ahead and install the fascia board. Another view of it there with our outlookers. And we are using 2x6 for the fascia board here. And we will have plumb cuts on the bottom or a cut to where the fascia board will be vertically plumb. And if you can, shape the top of the fascia board so that you can get better roof sheathing nailing. And for the last part of the video, let's go ahead and install our roof sheathing. And in this video, I wanted to show you what a smaller piece of roof sheathing would look like and how some of us might be tempted to use them because of the roof sheathing prices. And a good example of that would be spending another $100 or $200 to sheet a floor or a roof. Next up, let's take a look at the underside of the building here, the roof eaves. 
the rafter tails and how they've been notched so that you don't need to use larger fascia board. You can see that right here, along with another view of the fascia board and the sheathing. And hopefully if you live in an area where it snows, that the snow won't be sticking to this roof. And of course, another reason why you might want to use a roof with a slope this steep. And let's wrap this video up by taking a look at the sides of the building here. And thanks for watching. Also, don't forget to visit our website. We have an organized list of our videos there. You might have a difficult time finding that anywhere else.